Good morning, church. It is so good to see the century filled with people and those uh, who are uh, overspill to the third level, we are also very welcome. I hope to everyone find a place to uh, be in when we worship God. You look around, look around and see the, the sanctuary filled with people, God's people, failing. Thanks be to God. And before I share God's word to all of us who are based on this passage, I would like to also acknowledge our children. Today, being a Connection Sunday, our children are with us. So I have, we have not been talking to our children for quite some time. Can I invite our children who are 12 and below to come to the front? I mean, they have something to share to you. Uh, if those two young uh, daddy or mommy can come bring them forward. Now, today, I want to give you another privilege to do 
In your heart, you say, Jesus, lead me. Be with me. Okay? And, congregation can put their hands up. And we, when we are connected with Jesus, today I want you to do this. Just like I show you the ring, right? Your hands? Two rings? Rings? Okay? And these rings? Ring. Connect with your, your neighbor. I doubt you can also do that. That ring, you are seated with your her. Okay? Okay? You all know how to do this? Ah, yes. You see? Ah, the one next to you, you do this? You do this? Okay? And my. Ah. And the other hand? A ring? Ring, ring, ring. Ring connect with one another? Ah. Come. Hey, give me your hand. Give me your hand? Okay. We are not going to shake hand, but we can use that. Jesus has ring to connect one another. Let us pray. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your grace and your love for us. As our children stand around your holy communion table, as your people come back to your church, Lord, we looked up to the cross and we wish that, Lord, you draw us closer and closer to you. And with your grace, when we are connected to you, Lord, connect us with one another in the bond of love. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay? Okay, go back. It's COVID, so when I'm nearer to the children, I have to put on my mask because we are still in this COVID time. Uh, but church, it's good to see young and old gathered in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ back in his church. And as we know, our God values relationship. He's willing to help us build good relationship with him and with one another. However, uh, it's my... However, the COVID pandemic of the past two years has posed very serious challenges to every aspect of our life. Right now, I want you to think of one um, deepest impressions or one of your most memorable experiences with the COVID pandemic in the past two years? What are the one thing? Of course, we have many things, but what is most memorable or something that impacted you most? Can you share with people that like one next to you? Everyone share one thing. COVID, think of what? Wearing masks is also one. Everywhere you go, you see people wear masks. Or what else? 
because we have been through the same common journey, there's some common thing. If you have more to say, later, after our service, we go downstairs, you can share more. Because we treasure the journey and the lessons that we learn through this challenging time. For me, one of the things that strike me most is how many big cities have been forced to be empty and lifeless during this time. The great empty. The pandemic has caused uh, has, has had a long-lasting and far-reaching impact on people's physical and mental health due to mass lockdowns and quarantines. If it is not the big lockdowns, you get COVID, you get quarantine alone in a room for so long. So, because of this, loneliness and social isolation are most evident around the world. Even churches were forced to stop all in-person worship services during circuit breaker. This is the same the church that you are now sitting in. It was once that empty. We had to conduct Sunday worship services each from our home, live stream. I preach from home. Our worship leader lead from their own room and put things together. And when the, 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 the measures uh, get slightly less, uh, less relaxed, we came back, but the congregation cannot be here yet. It was just the worship team, the pastor, leading online live, uh, live streaming worship, but empty pews. Empty pews. This was unprecedented in human history, in church history. Something that unforgettable. What are the lessons that God wants to teach us? And we are not out of this tunnel yet. We are not yet. So how are we going to guilt ourselves to go through it? with a healthy mindset because loneliness and social isolations was one of the things that if we do not keep watch, it will cripple in. A lot of people feel that we are not connected with one another. But we thank God that for modern technology and social media. With this, we keep in touch with our friends through medias like uh, WhatsApp, Instagram, Zoom, Facebook. Many of us learn Zoom. Before COVID, I don't know this term called Zoom. No. I don't know. I thought I used WhatsApp and WhatsApp video call. Oh, I'm very advanced. Huh? We have to learn a lot of things uh, and thank God that we get used to it. Uh, with this, we are still able to get connected. But nothing can compare. I don't know about you. For me, there is this deep longing, deep sense of longing in me to be connected with people in person, face to face. I long for res the, to resume physical meetings because nothing can substitute for real face-to-face -face friendships. Nothing can replace the value of face-to-face -face interaction and handshakes. We may, we may not be able to do handshakes that, that much yet because I know this. That is searching again in, in July, August, uh, asks us to, to, to be vigilant. So maybe you, you do this, or just now that way, <laughs> the ring, but we're still connected. We use some innovative way, but it's not just the bodily gesture, it is us coming together, looking at one another, and able to connect able to talk. When you talk, you see the whole of the other person. You look, you see the facial expression. You'll see the body language. 
this is unreplaceable. Therefore, the moment when the COVID restriction was relaxed, people cannot wait to meet face to face with family and friends. Some of you, I know, were also eager to go home, the Malaysians. Take bus by air, air ticket, no matter how crowded the border is, go home because we have not been, been reunited with our families for two years. My elder son and daughter in law also came home from the United States to visit us with their two young children, two young long brothers. But the moment they can come back, they make it a point. They say, Mom, Mommy, I buy a ticket. I come back. I come back because they have the last time they visited us was in January 2020. The beginning of Wuhan outbreak. It didn't dare to go anywhere. Just stay home. And when they went home, things became a pandemic. And they came also. And then in May, this uh, mid May this year. That was the first time where I was able to hold my grandson, who is 11 months old, hug him, smell him. Not that I did see him through video call. Hi, hi, hi. And he was surprised when he looked at me. Eh, a real person, not in the screen. I, really, that two short weeks of staying together, that makes a lot of difference. There is this connectedness. Now they return. When I video call them, <sighs> wave to me, beam and smile. Because we ever meet face to face. Now let's go back to today's scripture. Exodus chapter 33, verses 7 to 11. When we are on this Connection Sunday, why do I choose this, this passage? Because the Israelites were in also a time of great change in the context of this passage. That generation, led by Moses, left the land of slavery in Egypt where they were born and they were familiar with that land and how they, they crossed the Red, Leaf, uh, Red Sea and wandered in the wilderness. They faced many unprecedented challenges. They, a lot of unfamiliar things. And how did God hold them together as a people? Because God said, I want to, I am your God, you are my people. God, in this wandering many decades, God held them together. How did he do that? Verse 7 of this past chapter says, Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off the camp. Pay attention to the word, far off from the camp, away from the camp. They pitch their tents, each family staying in one, one tent. But the Lord instructed Moses, wherever you go, away from the tent, build a tent of meeting, where they worship God, they can see God's sacrifices to God and they sought the Lord in that tent of meeting. I said, built one. Why was the tent of meeting pitched outside the camp afar off? Verse 7 continues to say, everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting which was outside the camp. So it was this God deliberately designed in such a way, wherever we are, whatever challenges we are facing, how dispersed we are, in your dwelling place, you need to step out of your camp. Walk a distance. You are able to see 
God's tabernacle. His tent is there. That is where you saw the Lord. We, not that God is not with us wherever we are, when you are in the house, in the room, quarantine. God is there. But there is a time where God wants us to go participate in a visible way. Everyone go to the same place where God has set that place apart as his meeting place. So they saw the Lord and they go out of their tent. There is usually a need for separation for you to enjoy intimacy. And why did the people came out, come out to look when Moses went into the tent of meeting? The scripture says, when Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise up and each would stand at their doorstep, their tent, their door. So they stood there and something must have been, happened whenever Moses went into the tent that made people came out. You know, something different. What happened to them that they came out? This passage says that as soon as Moses showed up in the tent of meeting, the crowd, pillar of crowd, descended and God spoke. So in that unprecedented long stretch of four decades, 40 years in the wilderness, keep moving, a lot of challenges, unsettlement, God was with them. Wherever you go, God said, I am with you. In daytime, he led them with the cloud, pillar of cloud. Nighttime, the pillar of fire. To let his people know that, come, seek me. You need not go through this alone. You need not depend on your own strength. Come and seek me. And so the Bible says, The next slide cannot, huh? Okay. In verse 10, it says, And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and worship, each at their tent door. Cannot. So they, they would, when Moses went into the tent of meeting, Something visible, evident happened. The glory of God came down and they saw that and people would rise up, stand up and worship God. Church, we pray that after the, this past two years, even the church at one point have to uh, abide the, the, the safety measure. We could not get gathered. But once we are able, but the, the worship service continues and we believe that the glory of God will never leave us. His pillar of cloud and his pillar of fire continues to be with us. And we pray that the Lord will open our eyes to see so that each of us in our own place, we will rise up, stand up and worship him. True worship. True worship of God. And when we really come and seek the Lord with a true heart of worship in spirit and in truth, the Bible says, I cannot. The next slide. Okay. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When we have true worship, God speaks through his servant. God's message is being delivered through his faithful servant. So pray for the pastors. Pray for yourself because we want to hear God's message once again in times like this. We want to pray the Lord you spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Lord, give us such same longing, desire to meet you 
face to face to hear you, hear your words. The Lord says in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, he says of Moses, he said, my, my servant Moses is faithful in my house. With him, I speak mouth to mouth clearly and not in riddles and he beholds the form of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, do we have this longing, this desire, Lord, speak. We are your children, we want to listen and not in riddles because we don't know this COVID and now monkeypox and then in Jalan Bukit Merah, tuberculosis and, and that, that uh, extreme weathers, all this we don't know. That this world is, is getting from bad to worse, inflation. We need to hear God's word assuring us, heal us, guide us to move forward. So we pray that Lord, but unless we have this heart, unless we are willing to step out of our own pitch camp, our house, and go to the tent of meeting, we cannot be gathered as a people of God. And God is so willing to speak to us as friends speaking to one another. And Jesus also promised this to his disciples. He said, you are my friends. You are my friends. If you want, if you do what I command you. Jesus commands us, we take God's word and we listen and we obey. And Jesus said, we are friends. I can share with you things that are so intimate. He's not just high up, far away. Friends are someone that we can really feel that intimacy. And if we want to meet God face to face as friends, we need to reorientate our lives with God at the center. At the center. Yes, for most of us, we receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. God is in our, li in our life. But once again, this COVID forced us to re-examine. With Jesus in my life is not enough. Jesus has to be at the center of my life. Whatever things, the different aspect of my, my life, my family, work, ministry, studies, church, interests, should all have God at the center. God has the final say in whatever I respond to my life situation. When the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness, God instructed them how to find a true north. One obvious way is to set up the tent of meeting outside the camp to remind them that no matter what happened, they should take God as the center of their lives. Center. And God is there. Seek the Lord. Come back to His, to his presence. Come not alone. Come with our fellow brothers and sisters. And so looking at this, this setting that God has instructed Moses to build when he was leading his people, God also put Sinka Methodist Church in HDB area. We are surrounded by houses. Ma many of you stay in Sinka. When you come to church on Sunday morning, you get out of your house, you come to church. And people who are not Christians yet, but they live around here, they know there is a church. There is a tent of meeting, a tabernacle. But this tabernacle needs God's people to gather in the name of Jesus. It is in worship. 
in surrendering, doing God's command, that the glory of God is manifested in all the region. The people know that the holy God is with this church, is among this people. And so, brothers and sisters, we are called to worship God here, to have face-to-face -face worship, fellowship with Him and His people, so that we can witness to all nations God's glory and His loving presence. Are we ready for that? And so, in conclusion, God values human relationships and our relationship with Him. The antidote to social isolation and holy loneliness is to connect first with God, then with others. Just now I asked the children to touch the Holy Communion table, to look at the cross. We too, whenever we come back to his sanctuary, look at the cross. Look at Jesus. Connect back with God. Help us. But sometimes our, our, our faith is, is, is weak. But when we gather, when we worship, we build one another. We edify one another in the love of God. Build faith. So we look up to God, we connect to God so that we can extend God's love, reach out to others to connect with one another so that we can overcome loneliness. And Mother Teresa, I ever say, what I can do, you cannot. What you can do, I cannot. But together, we can do something beautiful for God. And so in conclusion, today is Connection Sunday. After the long ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic, now is the time to come back. That's why we call we have a connection Sunday today. We call upon all God's children to get out of our homes and return to the sanctuary for Sunday worship. Just as the Israelites would stand up and worship at the door of their tents, let us also desire to meet God face to face here in His sanctuary and then connect with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we have a big reunion today. We worship together. We will pray for each other later in our worship. And then we will have fellowship meal together. But I want to invite you to do one thing as a table group. We are seated as a table group. I invite you to do one thing as a table group. When you gather downstairs later on, table group leader, take a photo of showing your group con like, using different ways to show that, that the connection uh, uh, press for me please uh, the, the other one okay these are some examples innovative way the whole table you can <laughs> stand around and take a picture send back to your cell leader chat group we have to see different table groups joining together. It's not just a body gesture, but when you do it together, we say, God, unite us together. Unite us together. And so, if you want to take a snapshot or you have a better way, you can do that, okay? In closing, in closing, I want us to read this verse. But looking at each other, telling each other, encouraging each other. This verse, let us say it together. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Again, turn to the other one and say, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Those who join us on uh, online live streaming worship, you, we have not forgotten you. I know for whatever reason you cannot join us today, but here as a church, let us 
look to that camera and tell them, say to those who join us in online worship, this same verse. Come together, look at that camera. Okay, together, one, two, three. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Amen. All glory to God. Amen.